Look, I'll tell you the truth, okay? This is the honest truth. With me, you'll be safer, happier, and richer. He shoots up the drug king. Well, what do you want to do? Who do you want to be with? I don't know. I'm confused. I don't know who's the right person. I just don't know. He raped me he last out when I first came downtown. He raped you. <laughs> he he raped took me too. Cool. He took my money too. Up in the Donald right. Hotel. Came up there, told me he was gonna rob some dude. Oh man. And he's. He took a fucking curl like or a fucking coat hanger. He did up on the gas heater and said he was gonna beat me if I didn't take off my clothes. And I said I ain't taking <laughs> off my clothes. We're scared. Of we don't mean to scare you. We're yeah, just scared. telling you the, the truth. truth. You get beat up and. Some of these girls end up getting killed. People get killed down here, they go to jail down here, everything happens down here, none of it's good. I haven't seen nobody get killed. I saw a guy get the shit kicked out of him by three niggers over in front of TJ's this morning and get hauled off in the ambulance. He got the shit kicked out of him because he pulled a big old snake knife out on him. You missed that one, dear, but that was just this morning. So who cares? I don't really care. Whatever happens, happens.
sister came and I showed them around Hollywood and we went out to eat and when they dropped me off, I, I kept trying to think of ways to say it all night. I really no right way to say that, especially to your mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I just said, for real reason, I can, well, first I started out by saying, I can't expect to get respect from you unless I have the respect to tell you. So I said, the real reason I came down here was to do porn. And that's how it went. And then there was her response. Oh, God looks, God back. Oh my God. You know, your body is sacred, it's a temple. My sister laughed. I think that's more of the, you know, I'm afraid laugh and I'm not uh, funny. But I'm, I, my sister was actually really strange for me to talk to Sasha because I feel like I'm talking to a young girl. I am talking to a young girl. We I mean, look really young. Um, the things that you're talking about, we talk about them just so lightly. And it's, it's just a lot. And um, we're going to triple it. So, Sasha, you know, before I get you with me talking to you, I, I find that you're cold and distant and hard and I can't help but think that there's something that made you that way. Um, you know, I just think that I'm dealing with things that I'm dealing with business and you know, I, I'm trying to get my facts out there, I'm trying to get my point out there. I mean, I may, what some people think, look like a young girl, but I'm actually a you know, responsible young woman. A lot of porn stars, when, when they were younger, a big majority of them would do research. Thank you. 
you swear the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so for God. I do. What would be your intention if you're forced to live in prison? Do everything I can to escape, and if necessary, kill prison guards on the way out, and I'll go right back to doing what I did before as soon as I hit the streets. Which is what? Kill kids. Kill and rape kids? Yes. So you should be executed for the safety of others? Yes. Kill and rape kids? 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 Yes.
mean, I remember just everything that happened with Joseph Duncan. I remember all that stuff because honestly, I don't think that however many years passed by, that's something that anybody could forget. Um, it, it made me feel kind of bad inside because I, I felt like people were remembering me for what I had gone through. And I know that that's kind of inevitable, but I felt like they were trying to make us relive what happened to us as a family. Wherever I went, it was just, oh my God, it's Shasta Gurney. It was just kind of like, I'm a normal girl. Treat me like I'm a normal girl. But Shasta became a celebrity victim, defined by tragedy and plagued by guilt. There was years and years that I spent feeling like what happened was my fault, like I could have done something to change what happened. As a kid, I felt really ashamed for what I had went through. You know, I had my innocence taken from me. Um, I felt really ashamed about that. And for, for that, I didn't feel like I was a normal eight-year-old little girl, and I hated that. I hated it so much. I wanted to be everybody else but myself. When I was about 12, I think I, that's when I got drunk for my first time, started smoking marijuana. Me being 12, I was hanging out with 17-year-olds, and just um, I felt a lot better being with those people because I felt like those people didn't see me as that little girl. It was just kind of like, oh, you know, Shasta, she'll get high with us or she'll party with us, and that felt good to me in a sense for a long time. Um, and then when I was 14, that was the first time that I had ever done methamphetamines, and that completely changed my life forever. From, from that day on, it was just kind of nonstop, just um, getting in trouble, pushing people away. I don't know where I'd be. I don't know if I'd be dead. I don't know, you know if I'd be in prison. You know, I just, I just don't know where I'd be, but I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to go to that program and meet the people that I did. I had made friendships that I felt like were gonna last forever and those people were in this area, kind of, you know. Um, you know, like some in Boise, some, you know, like a couple hours away. And it was just kind of like, I don't ever wanna leave these people. You know, like these people changed my life and I wanna be with them forever. Usually when we have family gatherings, sometimes it just rains. And so we have this like conspiracy or this thing we're like, well, that's our mom, you know, like she's just, she's showing up to wherever we are. We've never ever forgotten and we treat every day like they would still be here with us. You know, birthdays, we still celebrate. My mom's birthday, we still celebrate. My brother's birthday. Yeah. And what are those days like for you? Your mother's birthday, your brother's um, birthdays? Those days are hard, especially when, you know, I grew up and I had to realize that I need to embrace those days and I need to, I need to feel what I feel so that I can work through it. What would you say to Joseph Duncan if you saw him today? I'd want him to know that, yeah, what he did had affected my life, but I'd want him to know that um, he doesn't control me and he doesn't control how I feel. He's the person that took away my family and took away my innocence and everything, but I don't ever really think about him. It's just always my family, and I want him to know that he doesn't have any power right now because he's the one sitting in prison while I'm out living my life and uh, he's the one that um, has to live with the decisions that he's made while I'm out here making good decisions and I don't have regrets with my life. For the longest time um, whenever um, I thought about my mom I would think about what happened you know that night of uh, May 16th and it was causing me a lot more pain than I had already felt. Well as a kid I started having thoughts um, where um, you know, me having been raped and stuff, I couldn't understand like why a guy would want to do that to a little boy and a little girl and a family. And so like some thoughts came in my head of like, maybe that's all I'll ever be good for. Like maybe that's all I'll ever be good for. Like maybe that's all I'll ever be good for. Like maybe that's all I'll ever be good for. Like maybe that's all I'll ever be good for.